Welcome to another edition of First Person, again sponsored by the Ruin Camp Farm Drainage Company up in Fort Loramie, Ohio. 80 years experience farm, residential and commercial. If you've got water problems, they'll make water work for you. Baseball this afternoon from Huntington Park in downtown Columbus with Ted Power, the pitching coach of the Louisville Bats, former big league pitcher with the Reds. You'll remember him there and the Dodgers. And I think maybe even the Kansas City Royals, am I right? Yes, Kansas City Royals in 1988. You never forget. No. You never no. forget. And six others. We want to talk a little bit about baseball and the art of pitching uh, specifically today. And, you know, as as I explained to you, a lot of our kids at home who read and watch press pros are wrapping up their high school already, their Legion season. And I want to talk to you a little bit about the vernacular of the art of pitching and, and in particular some of the terminology that I think kids may not understand. Confusing when you hear people on TV talk about location and command and control. But talk a little bit about why it's so important, not just to throw strikes, but to locate that ball in the strike zone. What do people mean by that? Well, one thing is you, you're trying to keep the advantage as the pitcher, and the best way to do that is to work ahead in the count. So I always tell our pitchers, it doesn't necessarily have to be the first pitch, but one of the first two pitches needs to be a well-located pitch, and usually that is going to be a fastball. Not necessarily at this level because guys come up with pretty good off-speed stuff that they can control at any time in the count. But those first two pitches are very, very important that one of them is a strike either called or swung at. But talk about the fact of location, not just a strike, but where you want that pitch and, and why some locations within the strike zone are advantageous. Well, I break it down and, and you can see it when you watch television and they've got that box in the strike okay, zone. Sir. There's, there's nine zones. There's three at the top, three in the middle, and three at the bottom, inside and outside, up and down. And it really hasn't changed, I don't think, over the history of baseball, that up and in, low and away, and a mix of speeds is the most important thing. So, most hitters do not like to hit balls close to it. So the inner part of the plate is a good place to get ahead early. Now, it can also be a dangerous place, because if you miss over the plate, then they can whack it pretty good. So you, what you see a lot of is guys that I call, uh, they're kind of pickers. They're trying to pick that outside corner early in the count. Well, you have to be a little more aggressive in the zone but low early in the count because you want the umpire getting comfortable to call strikes. You want the hitters to have to start you know, their swings. Even if they don't swing, they've got to have something that they may have to offer at. And if you're picking early in the yeah. count, then you get behind in the count. The umpire's not on your side, and the batter is now got the advantage. Yeah. I do want to make this distinction, too. We're talking about high school kids, and sometimes the best thing you can do is you can throw it by somebody and right down the chute, <laughs> right down Broadway, as Cowboy says, yep. that's the best pitch you can make. Yes, it is. If you've got a good fastball, then you should be aggressive with it, especially at the high school and college levels. At these levels, these hitters are pretty good, yeah. and they've got quick hands and good eyesight, and you can't get away with just throwing hard unless you're in the upper 90s to 100 miles an hour. We're talking with Ted Power, a former Reds pitcher and now the pitching coach with the uh, AAA Louisville uh, Bats. One of the things that um, I'm sure that is a primary responsibility for you, and I'm sure that you feel your imprint on a lot of the kids that go up there, the J.J. Hoovers and the kids that go on to Cincinnati, and right now, I'm sure a little bit something to do with one Tony Cingrani about how to find out how to get him back, you know, in a, in a good groove. Talk a little bit about what you do with a pitcher to get his confidence back. Well, I try to simplify things. Don't make it so complicated. It's not rocket science. It's not brain surgery. It's a sport. It's baseball. And you need to have confidence in what you have, what you bring to the table, not necessarily what the hitter's strengths are. You work with your strengths and then you make adjustments and that's what this level and, and the major league is all about because the hitters will learn what your strengths are and adjust to that. Either they'll back off the plate or, or they'll move up in the, in, the, in the batter's box because you're throwing a lot of breaking balls and they want to get that ball before it breaks. Yep. So I think it's the ability to make adjustments on the fly. Yep. If I hear this once, I hear it a hundred times for high school coaches in the spring, and I'm not sure all of them know what they're saying when they say this, but they'll go out and tell a young man, hey, you've got to trust your stuff. <laughs> trust your stuff. Talk about what that means so kids can understand what trusting 
the way you throw the baseball means. You know, a, a lot of pitchers, believe it or not, don't know what their stuff really looks like. Yeah. And they, some of them don't see the ball as it goes through the strike zone for whatever reason. Now, for whatever reason, I always did. So I was able to read the hitter's approach to whatever pitch I threw and then either stay with that pitch if he didn't look like he could handle it or go to something else if it, he was right on it. So trusting your, quote, stuff is actually, it's important that you know your stuff. And if they don't see what their ball is doing, if it's got a little movement, if it's got uh, late, what we call life, yep. If it's a heavy fastball where it doesn't look like they're putting much effort into it, but it comes out of their hand quick, it's got that little giddy up at the end, they need to know either from the hitters or from looking at the video what their stuff really is. If they don't have a, a, a dominant fastball, then they need to come up with something off speed that they're comfortable with throwing at any time during, during that event. And that brings up my next point because uh, most of the kids that are going to see this or read press press on a daily basis don't throw 90. They're not going to throw 100 maybe ever in their life. But what do you tell a kid? How about how can you can be competitive when you throw the ball 78 miles an hour and 80? And we see kids that win. Oh, and you know that. There's guys playing, getting paid to play that don't throw the ball hard, but yet they throw where they want to. You know, uh, one of the one of the most important things that I learned early in my career, and I learned it from Dusty Baker in 1981 when I got called up with the Dodgers, is how to read hitters, where they hold their hands in their stance. Uh, if you watch them in the on-deck circle, they'll show you where they want the ball, by the way they take their practice swings. So don't pitch to their strength. Don't pitch to their hot zone. If they got high hands, they like the ball down low. If their hands are down here, don't try to elevate on them because they've got a flat level swing. So just watching batting practice, it was a big thing for me, and that's what Dusty Baker made me do. Watch the Dodger hitters, they were my own teammates, and he would say, look, there's Steve Garvey, see where his hands are? Look how he handles that ball away. Don't pitch him away, pitch him in. So it's an education, and a lot of the education comes through your eyes and your ears instead of a scouting report or you know, reading stats. And finally, you touched on it a second ago, but um, when I pitched it, high school and college and I did not throw the ball particularly hard. I had good breaking ball to throw that any time I wanted for a strike. But I learned early on when I got to Ohio State, you better change speeds because even in Division I college, they're going to wear you out if you come up there throwing hit speed, aren't you? You wouldn't believe the number of times I sit over here and I watch the pitchers they throw a fastball strike, fastball strike, throw a curveball for a ball. Now that's one ball and two strikes and they go back to that fastball and whack, it gets hit. Because that's the third one they've seen, and these hitters at this level, they get on it. And the hitters talk to each other. That's one thing a pitcher has to realize. They come back to that dugout if they made it out, and the next, you know, their teammates are like, what's he got? Does his fastball move? Does it cut? Does it save? Got to pay attention. We call it the fine art of pitching, and this guy knows something about it, because he's been there, and he's still teaching the uh, Reds of tomorrow how to pitch today. He's Ted Power, the pitching coach with the Louisville Bats. Thanks for your time. It's always fun to sit down and talk shop with you. Thank you. A lot of fun. We'll talk pheasant hunting sometime, too. Okay. All right. We'll do that. And again, this wraps up another edition of First Person, again, brought to you by the Ruin Camp Company in Fort Laramie, 80 years experience, farm, residential, and commercial. They'll make water work for you. For Ted Power and the sponsors, thanks again for your support of Press Pros. We'll see you again next time.